it's Jocelyn from Nutrient Wonder Hub. And today for Storytime with Wonder Hub, we're going to read the Canadian Shield Alphabet, which is written by Myrna Guimer and illustrated by Rosemary Condon. All right, let's see what's in here. The Canadian Shield Alphabet. Oh, and there's a map of Canada. Have you seen this map before? This is our country. And this rectangle right here, that's Saskatchewan. That's the province we live in. We're right about here, just in this yellow portion. All right, so A. Adrian and Alyssa watch an airplane arrive at Arviat. And Arviat is in Nunavut on the western shores of Hudson Bay. And B. Betty bites bird and butterfly designs onto birch bark. Other decorative artworks are made with beadwork and thread embroidery. Bright beads and threads are sewn onto tanned animal hides and items made from cloth, especially wo woolen. C. Canoeists celebrate a centennial in a challenging historic race. Canoeists and other wilderness travelers take charts, also called maps, and a compass to help them find the way. D. A Dene dad drives dogs near a diamond mine. The Dene people live in the southern part of the Yukon, Northwest Territories, Northern Alberta, Saskatchewan, which is where we live, and Manitoba. E, an excursion educates Elise about the environment. So Elise rode an excursion train to see the polar bears in Churchill, Manitoba on Hudson Bay. This, the Polar Bear Express in Ontario is another excursion. It travels to James Bay. So these are big buses that you can ride on to go and see polar bears in person. F, feet and fingers fly at festivals when fiddlers fiddle. People come from all over the world to listen or take part in the music of festivals. Throat singing, powwows, bagpipes, fiddling, drumming, dancing, and the music of many worldwide cultures. G. Graham gathers granite for Grandpa's rock garden. Ooh. Granite is a shield rock that contains several minerals colored from light to black. The dark grayish green surface rock in the shield is called greenstone. H. Harp seals and hooded seals hide from hungry harp hunters. Many species of seals can be sighted in the harbors along the east coast of Canada's largest island, Baffin Island. Polar bears inhabit this area too, and they are the seal's biggest predators. I. Yvonne builds an Inukshuk under Iqaluit's indigo sky. An Inukshuk means thing that can act in the place of a human in Inuktitut, which is the Inuit language. Years ago in the Arctic, an Inukshuk was an important way for the Inuit people to communicate. J. Jordan and Jasmine join other jackrabbits on the ski trail. So jackrabbits, of course, are furry creatures like large bunnies. But jackrabbits, like they're talking about here, are also children learning to cross-country ski. Have you, have you ever gone cross-country skiing? You could be considered a jackrabbit. That's a fun name, isn't it? K. Kira and Kieran help cook and prepare kinikinik in the kitchen. So kinikinik, or bearberry, is a low-growing evergreen shrub of the heather family that grows like a mat on the shield's rocky, sandy soil. L. Lumberjacks pull over logs to prevent log jams. And years ago, men called lumberjacks climbed and cut trees. In some areas, trees were rolled into the river and floated to the mills. They would use the river to transport the big trees. That's really smart. Lumber lumberjacks jumped and ran on the rolling logs and kept them from jamming with long hooked poles. Oh, that sounds like a dangerous job. M. Morgan finds a meteorite piece near a mine site. 
Meteorites are fragments of space rocks that enter, Earth, enter the Earth's atmosphere at speeds of up to 72 kilometers per second and smash into the ground. Big meteorites make large craters called meteorite sites. Oh, that's pretty cool. N. Nicholas and Nathaniel watch Northern Lights in November. Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis occur when electrons and solar particles in the air bump into atmospheric gases and give off light. And the bands of light shimmer and dance and slide across the night sky in colors of green, pink, mauve, blue, and yellow. Have you ever seen the Northern Lights? Have you ever go outside the city, out into the country where you can see the stars and everything? Go out on a, on a really cold night in the fall or winter and just watch the sky. See if you can see some colors up here and start dancing around. They're really cool. Oh, Olivia uses oars to row closer to otters on shore. Now, otters are fun to watch. They slide down rocky shores and slither into the water without a splash. Webbed feet make them fast swimmers. And in winter, they flop easily onto the ice and slide on their bellies from one hole to another. Otters are pretty cute. P, pelicans paddle by pictographs near a peninsula. Pictographs are pre-contact Aboriginal paintings made with colored pigments, possibly done with fingers or animal hairbrushes. So they would take different powdered things from like rocks or rocks or caves, and they would mix it with things like fish oil, and it would create a kind of paint that they could use to paint on the walls, and that's how they communicated before they had letters like the alphabet we're going through right now. Q. Kiviet sheds from Umigak grazing near a Kaskig. Kiviet, Kiviet is the fine inner insulating hair on the Umigak, Umigmak, the Inuktitut word for muskox. In the spring, muskox shed their Kiviet, which is gathered and woven into expensive yarn to be used to make fashionable garments. So the kiviet is all of this fluff that's shedding off of the muskox right there. R. Riley rocks the canoe as he reaps wild rice. Wild rice dates back centuries in shield country where First Nations people first harvest, harvested it. One person paddled the canoe while a second person bent the stalks over the gunwales with a stick using another stick to beat the stalks, knocking the rice kernels into the canoe. That's pretty fun. S. Sydney's sister flies a Cessna searching for survivors. Smart shield travelers carry survival equipment, maps, and compasses, and they know how to use them. But sometimes things go wrong. That's when Kassara can, save, can help save lives. And the Kassara is a type of radio. So it's a radio that they can communicate in airplanes so that people know where they are. T. Taylor makes tracks. He travels trails that tell many tales. So people who care about our environment say, when traveling in the wilderness, take only pictures and leave only footprints. Take lots of pictures of all the trees and the cool things you see, but don't leave anything behind. Don't leave any garbage behind. You want to take everything you take with you back out, back home with you. You want to only leave your footprints behind. You don't want to disturb nature. You. An Inuit woman uses an ulu to clean ungulate and ugjuk hides. So an ulu is a tool. It's a tool that she's using to separate the hide from the skin. And once cleaned, the hide is tanned to make jackets, waterproof moccasins, mitts, or even shelters. V. Vanya views a vixen hunting voles near Voises Bay. Voles are similar to mice in looks and size. Like all mammals, they are born alive and grow quickly on their mother's rich milk. Various types of voles inhabit Labrador in the eastern regions of the Canadian Shield. Near Voices Bay, there are two common ones. 
the meadow vole and the rock vole. Ooh. W. Whitewater rafting is a wild way to spend a weekend. Rafters and some canoeists, too, enjoy the thrill of running whitewater rapids. The rapids are graded with numbers. One is easy, and numbers five and higher are more difficult and should only be run by experienced canoeists. Have you ever gone whitewater rafting or whitewater canoeing? Oh, I haven't yet, but I want to someday. It looks like a lot of fun, but you want to do lots of practice before you do it. X. Alex fixes a big XY to his backpack. Alex likes to pretend that he is a famous explorer and fur trader, so he is going exploring. He packs a pencil so he can write in his journal like Alexander Henry, the younger. Alex packs a map like David Thompson, the map maker. He marks his bag with an XY like Alexander Mackenzie, another explorer. Oh, that's pretty cool. He's going to go on an adventure. Let's see what he can find. And you can do that too. Why? Youthful racers of York boats yell Yahoo! In the early days when the boats raced to trade their goods, a sail helped the wind to push the boat forward. So they would paddle, but they would also have a sail so the wind could help and it wouldn't be so much work. NZ. Zach's zipper zooms up fast when temperatures zap below zero. Oh, winters in the Canadian Shield are very cold. As we know here, it gets really cold in the winter. The coldest temperatures within the Canadian Shield, minus 58.3 degrees Celsius, oh brr, was recorded in Iroquois Falls, Ontario, on January 23rd, 1935. An exposed skin freezes in less than three minutes at that temperature. Oh, you definitely don't want to spend too much time outside when it's that cold. Oh, and that's the end of this book. That was a good story. So thank you for joining me for Storytime with Wonder Hub. The Canadian Shield Alphabet is available in Nutrien Wonder Hub's gift shop. And for future programs like this and more, follow us here or at wonderhub.ca. See you next time.